Hello everyone. It's Tuesday. It's Michelle at Serendipity House and um, I'm gonna work on this piece and almost finish it today. Uh, as you come along, just say hello. I'm gonna try to get us up, try to find myself on my iPad here. Um, so since I've seen you last, oh, it's going in the wrong direction. Um, since I've seen you last, I have done a little more, um, just fixing the details and it's not perfect, but I hand brushed all this with an artist brush and let me tell you, that's not easy. Hi sissy, thanks for coming on. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Sorry, it's just easier if I can quickly find you guys first and let people tune in. I'm sure there's a better way, but I'm not showing up yet. Um, and so I'll, I'll let you look at the piece. Well, that looked like it, but that was the wrong outfit. So I know that's not the right. Here I am. Okay. Thank you for waiting. Okay. So you guys can see that. Okay. So this is the Bombay chest that we, um, that I painted last week while you guys were watching. So you got to see it start as just, um, raw wood and come this far and I actually finished most of it while you guys were watching it wasn't that hard except for you know the the gold and all the little details and I think it's coming along with a great personality hi Amy um, so today what I'm gonna do is I have a few things to tell you about some Facebook groups and some specials and things um, and I'll tell you that in a bit as I'm working and I'm also gonna draw another name because nobody has claimed a prize so share the videos, write share in the comments and make sure you're following my page so that if I draw your name, you get to claim an IOD gift, okay? <laughs> I'm like, I feel like a scammer here. I'm like, nobody's claiming their prizes. I have stuff I'd love to share with you guys. Okay, so today what we're gonna do on this is I am gonna do some um, clear waxing with my DIY wax. Um, I did go over this, I did a little bit of wet sanding and I also, um, a couple people were asking what I was going to do with the steel wool. I, if I don't want to do like a total sanding, um, and I really don't want to because I, I want all the texture and brush marks and everything to show on this, so I didn't want to use sandpaper. So I go around with, this is um, 0000 steel wool. Um, I use this to kind of knock off the bumps that might that might have come up, like if there was like a raised bump, I don't want that in there. So I went over the whole thing with this. I did a little bit of wet sanding in some areas too, which is just water on a cloth. Um, I also love these for um, applying dark wax. Whoops, I forgot to turn my light on here. Um, which I'm not gonna apply on this today, but these are um, great for there. Is that better? But these are great for applying dark wax. You just, uh, I've got a video I did a while ago where I put dark wax on turquoise and you can just see it rubbing in and showing all the marks. Um, I love these, just local hardware. You can buy them. Okay, so, but today I am going to be applying the clear wax with my um, DIY brush. Now, I, I want to know if that's backwards. I did something that I thought was going to fix the direction but I can't really tell I think it's backwards I'm trying to figure out how to not have everything mirror image so that when you guys see words they're they're going the right way um, I'm not left-handed I'm right-handed <laughs> I look left-handed in all the videos all right so I'm just gonna dab it into my actually uh, I'm gonna get the wax off the sides here and into the middle back into the middle of my can here you don't need a whole lot of this. The, the, this wax is natural. It doesn't stink at all. It doesn't have any, um, it is backwards. Darn, I was playing around with some buttons I thought would work, but at least I didn't mess it up and you can still see me. Okay, well, I'm right-handed. Everything's backwards. DIY wax. I'm gonna go right over this and wait until you see the colors change. I love this part. Now it, it is going to lighten up a little bit because the wax is wet. So you don't need much. I'm just wiping it right on. This is not a real muscle activity. 
but this is more like what this color looks like. It's deceiving when it's wet. And the blue, look, it's, it gets almost navy, see? So um, knowing what it was gonna look like when it was waxed, that's why I chose the color combination I did. So I know there are a lot of people that are not waxers. People are, seem to be, a lot of people seem to be afraid of it or they've done it a couple times and don't like it. Do any of you wax? What is your experience with wax? Have you enjoyed doing it? Um, I, I've tried a few different kinds of wax and like min wax. The first wax I ever tried was an Andy Sloan wax. Um, I ended up liking the waxes that don't have the solvents in them because they don't give me headaches, they don't smell, um, and they buff out beautifully and I can use them inside in the winter. Um, <clears throat> But some, of, some waxes are definitely much harder to use than others. I mean, the, the soft paste waxes are a lot easier to use, um, like, a, like min wax, like hard as a rock, and also smells really bad. Um, Annie Sloan, when I used that, I used to put, um, mix it with mineral spirits and almost use it as a glaze because it just wasn't as easy for me to do, but you get used to it. But I love waxing, I really do. I think it, at the end when you buff it out, it makes your piece just look hand finished and luxurious and it's got a feeling that Polly doesn't have. All right, I'm not sure how it got underneath in here. Like I told you guys last week, I usually take everything off. I usually do not have I usually do not leave my hardware on it. It's not easy to wax behind it. So, Sissy, you've never used wax. And uh, let's see, Clarice, I'm a, I don't know if you're Bob or Clarice. I'm assuming you're Clar Clarice, right? <laughs> she loves waxing. Hi, hi, Mary, how are you? I lost myself again on here. Um, so those of you who, I mean, I suggest if you like furniture, doing furniture, you try everything that you can. Um, Try everything once, see what you like. So that really totally changed the color, right? I'm not sure what's going on with these, if it's not absorbing it. Um, actually, you know what it feels like, it's not even, feels like it dried already. So I want it all to be that kind of uniform dark color and as it dries, it'll lighten a little bit. Um, and the DIY paint is really porous so it will probably, um, it soaks up a lot because it's porous. So it, I'll, I'll probably do a second coat on this and then buff it with my buffer. But look at the difference. Look at the difference in these two drawers. It's so rich looking. All right, I, I'm gonna do the next one and then I'm gonna show you what I, what I had planned on the um, sides. Yeah, it really did change the color. The, um, the, when I watched this back on camera, actually, and looked at this shade of blue, it does not at all look like Bohemian Blue. Um, I think that with a lot of this work, everything that you do goes through stages. <laughs> and, like, I knew what this was going to turn out because if you have a, it doesn't look this light in the can. It looks um, dark in, in the can that it comes in or in the, um, here, let me grab it. So this is what's on here. So I knew, um, I knew that when it was dry, it was gonna be, it was gonna change to like these shades. And so everything kind of goes through a process of kind of ugly duckling to white swan, right? All right, and I'm sure the camera can't see it close up, but I'm gonna um, be showing you guys close up when it's done, like finished, finished, and let you see because I was telling you how I like to paint texturally and leave the brush strokes in. So if you could see that. I mean, I this piece is for me. I want it to look hand painted. I don't like factory finishes. Everybody's got that. Anybody can have a factory finish, right? To have a hand painted piece, you want it to look hand painted. Not by your five-year-old, but hand painted. Oh, all right, beautiful. So I'll probably wait a day um, before 
you know, let it dry overnight while I work on other things before I pop it. Um, otherwise, maybe like six hours after the first coat, I would wait be just because the paint is porous. I really want it to like soak in there and um, kind of harden on the inside a little bit more. Um, I love my wax lovers. I love meeting other wax lovers. I'm in so many forums on Facebook and everyone's like, no, no, wax. they just hate wax. All right. Which I don't really understand. All right, for you, I'm leaving these drawers in. Normally I would take them out and do this, which I actually I'll do afterward. Just to make sure it's all nice and neat. What do you think? Oh, it's just so rich. You know, I, I hadn't thought some, a couple people were, were saying that um, Beauty and the Beast, and I, that, never even, that never even crossed my mind. I didn't even think of that when I was uh, painting it. I just didn't see it, probably because I'm like right here on the face of it. Um, but it's okay. I like Beauty and the Beast, and I like Over the Top. And I'm going to stop waxing here and turn this around. Or I'm going to do this part. I'm going to show you what I'm doing on the side. I changed things up a little bit because I love to layer. All right, so. Yeah, it almost it turns to almost like a navy blue after it's waxed, this Bellini blue color which is why it's kind of become one of like a neutral to me. It just, it looks great with black wax too, which I'm going to use today in a little while when I'm done. I'm gonna go back with my black wax and I'm gonna do some shadowing on the inside and then um, uh, blend it in with the technique I showed you guys last week. tell if that's on evenly but it's going to get two coats that's another reason to do two coats um, I've been debating whether or not this ridge right here should be gold uh, if I wax it I can't go back and paint it so go ahead and weigh in on that I'm gonna leave that alone for now do you think that this ring around at this point there can't be too much gold really right so should this be gold or should I just leave like the wavy parts I don't know you tell me Okay, I'm going to turn the table around so I can show you what I'm doing on the side. Alrighty, so, you see that alright? I like layering. So I couldn't leave this blank. So I decided that I'm going to put um, this is the Petite Rosier, uh, the 11 by 14 size, so the writing is smaller. So this is IOD transfer. I'm going to go ahead real quick and put this right in here. Now I cut it up and I'm going to piece it together after because, um, and what I mean by that is I'm going to take some extra words and put them where they're not. This is just for design. Um, I'm sure this says something in French. Uh, I don't speak French. I won't have any French speaking friends coming over. Um, I'm putting this on for design, not because it says something meaningful. Although it might, I'm just, there are I'm speaking to the people who say, why are all the French things on your furniture? And do you know what it says? And you can't cut it into pieces. Um, I'm gonna cut it into pieces <laughs> and I'm okay with that. All right, so this is, I don't know if you can tell, this is a curved slope. And also, I gotta say, I don't like putting transfers on in this direction. I always lay down. It's so much easier on my shoulders and my arms and it releases, for me, it comes off easier. But I'm gonna put this on and I'm gonna wax right over it. I just uh, would like to do it without my 
shoulders hurting. The little words, because there, see these are like little tiny pieces, they take a little more rubbing, I think, than the bigger, like if you have a big flower, you know, that obviously comes off easier than all these little tiny pieces. So it, it, they do take just a little longer. It is releasing though, it shouldn't take too long. So weigh in, I'm gonna look in a second, I'm gonna to try to keep rubbing here, but on whether or not that spot right there should be gold. And the Golden Ticket is a gold paint by DIY. It has a, uh, it has a top coat in it already, um, but I, I'm gonna wax, I put it on and then I'll wax right over it because I, I don't put anything over wax because, um, because things generally don't won't stick to wax unless it's another color wax. Waxes are resist, which means that it's going to resist whatever you put over the top of it. Which is a good thing. I mean, some people, if they're painting in layers and they want colors to show up underneath, they'll put a little wax on so that the paint won't stick there. So. to not have this move so much it's on a curve so it's not really taped on you know there's kind of like a bubble in it there didn't cut this out as you can see it's going right over the edges where I don't want it I'm basically just no, I'm not gonna rub it on there it's not touching so it's not gonna stick it's it's kind of being stopped by the molding that's painted gold and then I'm actually gonna just use those pieces and randomly fill in the spots that have no transfer For some reason, I'm doing this with my right arm. My left arm is killing me. I don't know if it's the way I'm holding my shoulder. Never figure that out. And actually, I can't even do it with that hand. So back over here. If you're asking questions, if anybody's still left, I'll answer them in one sec. just so much easier to lay this down. All right, it's almost done. It's left just right here. It's gonna make all the difference though. Stuff. 
stubborn spots here. feel like in the last 10 minutes I lost everybody that seemed like a really long I don't know how long it really was um, do you seal after waxing um, no wax is my sealer Mary um, yeah wax wax is my sealer so wax is the last thing that I put on I do two coats and I'm gonna do like a detailed um, with some black wax and do some shadowing but wax is all I use and you know I have pieces in my house and my sister's house that I did like four years ago and they they're still fine i mean if you as long as you don't put like wet drinks on it or hot plate um once the wax cures it's it's i wouldn't do it on a dining room table but it's fine for like a side table certainly the bottom of things i do it on dressers <sighs> okay so sarah so i got a couple of no's here i'm not to add i'm assuming the no is no gold paint I know sometimes, sometimes I just don't know when to stop because <laughs> I like, uh, no one's going to tell me about that. You guys aren't my friends. Come on. Just keeping it real for you. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, words are always harder to transfer. I find, I think it's because it's these little tiny pieces. They don't come off um, very easily. Um, all right, so I'm going to just fill in this. It's not gonna make any sense. I'm, uh, the only thing I'm gonna do is try to line up. So it's just obviously try to keep it looking like it's written on the same line. All right, so let's fill these in here. And let's give it a little couple of words here. here. Oh, this probably says something really crazy. And let's give it a word here. I waste nothing. And um, especially this stuff. I do a lot of, I pull out little parts and pieces to my transfers that I don't use all the time and I'll get a whole other project out of it. And let's see, we're going to do a little bit here. The only thing I don't like that bugs me a little bit because I'm a little anal is all the commas at the end of the sentences when I'm not putting it. And when I, you know, when I'm finished, there's obviously no other word underneath it. All right, and then just something little right in there. All right, what do we think? Does that look good? I don't really see any. All right, this is another time that I use my steel wool, so. I am gonna make sure that my transfer is all down. I can see a couple spots lifting up. I'm gonna take my steel wool. It's gonna kind of push it into the paint and pull up anything that's loose. Oh, so I, I can actually, as I'm doing this, I can see on the edges of, the, of these letters where there's a little bit of halo, which is that um, kind of shiny stuff I can see that pressing right into the paint, so you can't really even see it. So that's what this, this stage is important. It, it really is taking stuff off and pressing in. All right, let me get a blue cloth. Make sure that's clean. All right. Are we ready to wax? Does that look good? Alrighty, so I'm gonna grab my wax. What do I do with my wax? <laughs> oh, this is my life. I put stuff down all the time and don't know where I put it. Um, so, yes, this is the Petite Rosier. Um, this is the 11 by 14. I've got something else on the back. I'm gonna turn it around and I'll show you that in a second. But this is the 11 by 14. 
and I'm gonna wax right over it. I wax over most of my transfers, like 99% of the time. Um, I have transfers on furniture that I did a year ago in June that I put right over paint and waxed, uh, and it's on there fine. Not lifting, totally fine. All right, so this right here, before I, this, is, this color was already changed, which you probably couldn't tell. Um, before I put that on, put that transfer on, just to try it, I sealed with um, this top coat. It's one of the ones that I sell, which is why I chose this one. But um, in doing some testing and some, some research and development and just playing with products, we are finding that um, the transfers stick better over a universal sealer. Um, and something flat, not something with a sheen. Um, that said, for the last four years, I've put transfers over my paint and I've had no problems with them. Like some of them I've kept because I want to know, you know, if I'm selling this to customers, how well is this wearing? How, how are my products holding up? Um, and so I, this is like the second time ever that I've just, that I've sealed before the transfer. So that's why it was a different color. And I must have missed sealer or it's that color, but it'll all even out. So it sounds like we have a no on making that gold. Um, let's see. Words are harder to transfer. What about a thin gold line under the small drawer around the part of the curve all the way around? Thin gold line. So here? I don't know. I, now I'm like changing my mind and I don't want to like put wax up there if I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Um, I almost feel like there's enough gold. Oops, I'm yeah, I think, I think I'm going to leave it and okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave it and here's the reason why I'm going to leave it. I can always go back and change my mind because I have an awesome gold gilding wax that is the same, very similar color to the golden ticket. And that, because it's gilding wax, can go right over this when it dries. So if I decide to add more gold, or if I decide to add just a thin line around it, I'll put a little of my gilding wax on my finger and hit it later. Okay. Just made a decision. All right. I love that. I'm really glad I put that on there. What do we think? Yeah. It might need some gold splashes on it too. I don't know. All right, so I'm gonna turn this around again. This is gonna be in my living room. Or my, yeah, it's gonna be in my house. And uh, because I already know where it's going, I also know that it is going to be um, not in the middle of the room, but it's not going to be against a wall. So I painted the back of this. Um, it's the same two colors, mermaid tail and bohemian blue. Um, and I did some blending in there and I already applied most of the large transfer on there. This is the petite rosé also, but it's got large writing. And so that's what's going on the back. Um, and I think I'm also, I don't think, I'm not going to do anything to fill these spots in, but I think I'm going to flick some golden ticket on it. Um, and I'm going to do that in a minute. I'm going to finish this and then we're going to flick some golden ticket on it. All right, let me grab my names here. This is for the last share. I'm going to pick another name. Um, so there's 18 in here from the last share because nobody claimed anything. So I'm gonna pick another name. Hey, hi. What brush are you using to apply the wax? I am using, <laughs> I keep losing my stuff, Jerry. Oh, Jerry, you're my friend. How's, I don't have lipstick on my teeth. <laughs> I think I got it. Um, what am I, I'm using a DIY brush. Uh, it's a synthetic brush made by DIY. 
um, flat edge wax brush. I like using a brush. Um, sometimes I use my steel wool. I don't usually use cloth to do wax because I feel like it wastes a lot of the wax. Okay, well, let's pick a name here. And then I gotta tell you guys about the two, about a couple of groups while I'm putting this on. This will be much faster because the letters are bigger. <laughs> okay, Cheryl Hemsarf. Cheryl, I see you a lot, so I am sure you're gonna see this and claim your prize. Please, Cheryl. Cheryl Hemsarth. Yay. Message me so I can get you something. Okay. Let's finish putting this on here. Um, all right. You know what? I'm really liking, um, when I look on the camera, I can see this, see this better. But the um, blending of the color in there, I like it a lot. I, I wouldn't have had room to do it on the other side, I guess, because there's so much going on. But um, this is going to be a pretty back piece of, you know, the back of the furniture is going to be kind of pretty. All right, so while I'm rubbing this on, if I can rub and talk at the same time and keep my train of thought, which is questionable, <laughs> I want to tell you about a couple of um, things going on. Um, so you guys, you might have noticed that attached to my page is a new group, like attached to my Facebook Serendipity House page, um, and it's a group called um, Serendipity House at the Studio, and I have been thinking about doing a separate group and deciding what it is that I'm going to be doing in the group, like offering specials or special tutorials, um, and... Uh, also doing uh, like letting the people in the group the people in there be the first ones to kind of have dibs on pre-ordering new products or seeing what the new releases are and the only stipulation for being in the group is that it is for my um, customers so if you're somebody if you ask to join the group and you show up in my customer database as somebody who's bought anything even if it was five years ago and it, it's a product that I don't even sell anymore um, then I would love for you to join the group it's very sm small right now because I just opened it yesterday afternoon um, the reason it's only open to my current customers is just because I know that there are a lot of places out there, a lot of websites that you could be ordering your stuff from. I know you spend a lot of money on shipping, um, which are actual shipping rates, none of it goes into my pocket, but I still am sensitive to the fact that shipping costs a lot of money and I have, you know, you have a lot of choices, so I appreciate you and I just wanna make sure you know that and give, give back what I can give back. And it'll be a great place to share some projects and some things that you have that you're working on that have come from serendipity house how's my multitasking doing i'm not sure all right usually when i do the bigger transfers i take yeah i start to take them off do i want that bottom line um i think no Okay, so the other group I wanted to tell you about is a group that some of you are probably already in. If you're not in it, I would love for you to go join it. It's not my group, but I'm participating in a new, um, something new that they are sponsoring. Um, the group is called um, Furniture Rehab Boot Camp. Um, Sherry Strickland's name might be in it, under it, um, but Furniture Rehab Boot Camp. Um, and what we're, what they're doing is starting February 1st, which I can't believe is this week already. They are having um, brand experts and we'll be doing um, special, hold on here, I just, this just slid on me. So in that group, 
she has chosen um, some brand experts, and I am, I've been asked to do the um, Iron Orchid design, which are all the transfers, the stamps, uh, and the molds, and also be a brand expert in that group for DIY paint. And what that means is I'll be doing demos with those products, helping people who need help with those products, uh, and having maybe periodic specials in that group um, on Frugal Fridays. So go ahead and join that group. There's lots of um, there's lots of great stuff in there already, and I think this brand experts and having so there's people in there that represent all sorts of uh, products. Cling on brushes, which I also carry. Um, Dixie Bell paint, um, some other paint lines, and some of the some of those um, stencils that you use with paste. I can't remember the name of the company. If anybody, um, Couture maybe might be the name of the company. I don't use those, so I'm not positive what they're called. But so it's a good way to try a lot of different brands. Right. You know what else I like about doing this laying down is it doesn't slide like this. I don't know. So those of you who do transfers, do you lay your piece down so that you are transferring like this um, and letting gravity help you? Or do you always stand up and do it like I'm doing it now? I'm curious. A lot of people seem to stand it up, even with drawers, which I don't get. Um, and I really think this is so much harder. Um, so I have a special that's going to be revealed on Friday in the, in the um, Furniture Rehab Boot Camp group, but I'm going to tell you guys about it now so you get a four-day jump on it. As soon as I finish these four words so that I can concentrate. <laughs> See, there's a line that I left off the bottom, but it's all right. I, do, I don't need another line. I think that lays out quite, that lays out okay. Especially when you're, it's a little side table. You're going to be standing above it. You won't. Should I add a line here? One more line. Does it need it? Oh, I need a drink. I'm talking too much. All right. Hi, Leanne. Heidi. Hi, Jean. The name of the group, again, to join is Furniture Rehab Boot Camp. And um, if you are a customer of Serendipity House, I would love for you to join Serendipity House at the studio, which is connected to my Facebook page, easy to find. Um, maybe I will also post a link to the Furniture Rehab Boot Camp group, too, and you just have to request to join and they will, um, Sherry will approve you when you're in the group. All right, so um, I wanna tell you about the special starting on Friday that you guys get a two day jump on. But I also wanna know, should I add a line real quick to the bottom before we splash on our golden ticket, which is what I'm gonna do in a minute. Um, okay, so in the Furniture Rehab Boot Camp, they have something called Frugal Fridays. And um, that is the day when the brand experts and the people representing the brands can say, you know, buy $50 worth and get 10% off of Dixie Bell paint. Or, you know, this particular stencil is 10% off for the next month or for the first 10 people, whatever. Um, so Friday also happens to be February 1st, which is this Friday, which is when the um, new brand experts program begins. So I've come up with, um, just kind of a teaser special in there to get to know uh, the products that I'm representing, which are DIY and IOD. And the special is, um, if you, let's see, buy, if you buy one paintable transfer and three small DIY colors, you get 15% off. Uh, there's a code 
I forgot the code. I'm gonna write the code in the comments here. Um, but basically you just go to serendipity.house and you choose one of the transfers that says paintable at the end of it and three of these colors. I'll be doing um, a de another demo of the paintable transfers. I think that the DIY paint looked awesome um, on them and you could use it for lots of other things. So I'm gonna keep using these. Uh, and then you can seal it with a water-based sealer or you can buy um, the DIY big top top coat, which is what I used on the one I did last time. And it didn't smudge, so you don't have to spray. Um, Okay, so, and then automatically, if you have those things in your car, one paintable transfer, three small paints, um, and you put the coupon code in that I'm gonna write in these comments, you'll get 15% off those items. And I don't do sales often, just so. <laughs> um, I, I order like every week the IOD stuff and the DIY paint, um, you know, I'm always restocking. We, I just, they're in high demand and sales don't happen between really any of the retailers. Um, so this is something that is just special to kick off that brand retailer. All right, did anybody, you like it like that, don't add it. Okay. All righty. What's up next then? My steel wool, if I can find it. I'm gonna steel wool this down. Does anybody else use this? I don't know where I heard of it or why I even started using it, but I love applying wax with it. And it's great for this because it just, now I am getting, okay, look, can you see that? This is, I think I'm using, this is also from the side I did before I waxed it. So it is picking up little bits of the transfer. I don't see, there's, you know, there's no ripped words or anything. But, oh, I just, all right. And my dry cloth. I'm gonna wipe off all the lint. And let's see, I, I need a plan, because I'm not sure if I wanna put, if I wanna get uh, paint all over the top there. I'm gonna flick some paint on. Should I cover the top? I probably should cover. This is kind of making it up as you go here. Because I just don't want to, I don't know if I want to splash up there or not. All right, so I'm gonna be using this. All right, that's what I'm gonna use. Let me just find a, a nice stiff brush. Easier, making it up as I go along, that's easier said than done. All right, so, all right, this is what I have found. Um, a toothbrush would be perfect for this, but I just don't have a toothbrush here. So I'm using, this is actually an old beat up stencil brush and I can clean it after. So it's got pretty stiff, stiff bristles, okay? Cause I'm going to put the paint on and we're gonna splash. All right. So Cheryl Hemsarth, if you're watching now and you didn't hear, you are um, you were drawn to win something today. I'm gonna dump a little bit into the cap because my goodness is almost gone. I've used this, I've had that jar open for about six months and I use it a lot. All right, let's see. big <laughs> I think I just shot something shot some of this paint completely across the room hmm. oh, there we go I want 
want some big, I want some big chunks on there. Jeez, is it picking up on the camera? Let's just try like this. Here we go. Well, that's how to get big chunks, I guess, is you just this is kind of thick because I'm at the bottom of my, there we go. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Alrighty. That's going to have to dry. Oh, I just, that was fun and I love doing it. Can you see it? Did it pick up? You did the brush trick too, Joe, on your orange bench. I, oh, I just love doing this. Can you um, can you see that? Let me let me just try to do a close up without losing you guys. Can you see? It's just I, I just I just let that makes me so happy. I don't know why it does or what it is about it. Some people might think it looks messy, um, but I it was fun and I. I think it looks pretty cool. So when that dries, it's going to get waxed, um, but it needs to completely dry. So, so that's that. Let's turn around the front. And I'm going to do the black wax shadowing and then say goodbye for the day. So the only thing I haven't done, and I'm gonna, this isn't all quite dry yet, but it's okay for what I'm gonna do next. So what I'm doing next is, what am I doing next? Next, I am taking my DIY black wax. So I'm taking DIY black wax here, and I'm gonna go and create some shadowing. I just have a little brush, I'm gonna dip it in, it's okay if this is messy because I'm going to go back in and blend later. So I'm just going to create some shadows. When this all dries, it'll show up some more. It'll, it's really just going to give it more dimension. I like the gold and I like I like all the bling but sometimes I also like it to look um, old and worn and not all like shiny new bling and so these are the things that kind of you know layering and making the textures I think that makes a piece look more authentic you know I, nothing just a straight coat of paint without the details, I think, is kind of boring. And it just looks like painted, boring painted furniture. This is the fun part, you guys. Playing with all this stuff. This is fun. This is, what's, this is what um, is going to set you apart if you are selling your furniture. It is doing all the detail work that not everybody dares to do. And it's really easy. I mean, most of the stuff I just, I taught myself, you know, and if, it's, if it looks bad, you go back and you can undo it. It's just paint. So I encourage everybody to jump in and just give it a try. I mean, it's not even blended yet and it, and it already looks better. If you have any ideas of what else could be added, I would love to hear them because, you know, maybe there's some cool detail that I haven't tried or that I'm not even thinking about for this. So, I'm still learning. I learn a lot all the time from other artists, from 
from watching videos. There's always more to learn. There's always something new to try. And that reminds me about the mica. Um, on the last video, we were talking about things that you guys wanted to see. And one of the things that I brought up was that I had been watching um, a page called Mica Revolution for about, for a couple of years now I've been watching and they do um, take mica and they make it into sheets and they do um, amazing walls and ceilings. And so, um, they also have shown it on, you know, some furniture. So I got a hold of Diane last week after um, we went live and Diane Corso, who is the creator and the owner of the company, talked to her a little bit about doing it on furniture. And um, I ordered a sample kit of 12 by 12 sheets uh, of the mica and it'll probably take like 10 days to two weeks to get to me I don't I don't really know but I did order it and so I'm gonna be working with Micah on some of my furniture and um, I'm really excited it's something that um, she's giving me some tips but maybe it's something that we can you can learn right along with me um, she suggested that wax over it would be uh, better than doing epoxy which I'm super excited about because you know how I love wax so and that's something I never even would have thought of so I'm really happy I got to talk to her um, so if you don't already follow Micah Revolution um, on Facebook page go and give a follow and look at some of their projects they're amazing and we're gonna be using some of their things in the next couple weeks okay so what do we think um, I can do the side too How's that look? Yeah, it already is looking better. I, I can, you probably can't see the brush strokes or anything in there yet, but um, I'll show them to you later. And um, when it's done and all buffed out, the black wax I think makes a big difference. I think it's coming along well. I think I'm gonna put some black wax on these shiny knobs too. All right, have I forgotten anything? I don't think so. Um, Go ahead and um, share this video. Keep and try to go and join the um, the furniture boot camp group, and I will put a link in the comments later on today when I get home. Um, and I'm going to show you this when I'm all finished with it. Uh, meanwhile, <coughs> I am working on this table here, which um, is the top to the the pie top crust table. It's gonna get the midnight transfer, uh, the midnight garden transfer. And I'm gonna to try to record that on the fast forward thing. I've never actually used that, but you know, when people show a project and it's going on fast forward. So uh, I'm gonna see how that goes, but I'm gonna to get to that uh, later also, and also do some wet distressing on the base. So I'll have more to show you. Um, have a great day. Thanks for joining me. I really appreciate all you guys. Um, and I'll see you soon, bye.